Halloween can be scary. And it is also for integration developers. It's time that we look at some of the, the things that have happened over the years that keep us alive and keep us fresh and make sure that we always are able to deliver good integrations. So this year we ask, what share your stories and then we could do something on it. And this is this. I'll go through some of the different stories that we receive here, give my impressions and take on these things. The first one here is about people that have created message mapping but did not really understand what they were about. Uh, if you have done any kind of support, you'll probably receive this uh, this mapping. Uh, this mapping is failing, can you please uh, fix it? And then you open it and it is completely mess and you have no clue about what this mapping is doing. I had a case uh, where I was supporting a client via terminal server or whatever, or Teams, something like that, uh, 100 years ago. And one of the things that they we saw was that it was really difficult to actually understand what was going on. And it was a change or a, a update or events on orders or something like that. So we had a create order, create order and a delete order. And this developer had not really understood how context worked. So they were just reading the, the order numbers and processing them in separate part of the mappings. When we got this uh, delete order, it was just put in as a create order and everything was a mess. That is why you need to understand what the tool is about. The other one, and this is one of my, and probably the reason why I created the, the FIGAF tool. We were at uh, Go Live. we had just moved, uh, everything was frantic. Um, I had done some kind of an order processing interface and one of the uh, consultants came and said, okay, we forgot one order, can you just do this? You just need to create this and then it needs to update this uh, document type. Pretty easy fix. We tested it and, and worked. When and we moved into production, a couple of hours later the, the, they came in, but no, one, no other mappings are working and processed and we needed to look at the systems. And there we could see that I had forgotten that I needed to check that this value did not always exist. And that meant that all the other orders were failing. So we had uh, made the fix and run this. And this is why it makes sense to have test cases. So you can run this even when the odds are tight and you don't have as much time on this. This, I guess, is also kind of the scary thing. Um, a, a developer that has a PO system that is overloaded, they start restarting uh, uh, the IDOC uh, systems and, yeah, uh, HANA Enterprise Cloud, I guess. Um, and this is all this thing about what is going on and obviously there are some things that you can test and there's other things that you cannot test and I think this is probably uh, one of the, the, the challenges that you would face for different scenarios um, that gives you whatever hair on your chest and you experience these things. I think this is also one of the, the good stories about the first integration project he worked on. He was just doing some small work and was thrown into the, the lines then being able or needed to grow and say, well, okay, I was just here to do some, some basic stuff, but now I need to build all of these cool things um, and, and make sure everything works. And I have, so that was, I would imagine really a learning experience that got him started on his trajectory working with SAP integration. The, I think this one is also a more generic one. It is the part about people that are using different frameworks for managing uh, the integration. And obviously JavaScript is a great tool. 
Um, and it is good if you, everybody knows how to use it, etc. One of the things that I've often seen is it is a little difficult to, to work with. Um, and the same with ABAP mappings. I have no clue about how to update an ABAP mapping, figure out what it does, run it, manage it. Because I've never had the need for it, but if I were on a project where we needed to, to figure out what this mapping was doing, it would be really a hell. And I think this is the same thing. So you could have some really good developers that have created the perfect mapping, perfect in every sense, in 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 ABAP, in, in JavaScript. And then when you get into a real world scenario and you need to fix it, the people that need to support it also need to have that, that ability. So it makes sense to go with what is actually possible for these scenarios. This one. I think I've also experienced the part where some of my the systems I'm working on was not responding and were overloaded. And there can be obviously a lot of reasons for this. I think the, the place I was closest was exactly once in order. For a lot of scenarios, huge data volumes. We should probably have considered something like this, and um, it is really difficult. And you'll see this when you get started using integration. And if you have not tuned the system and suddenly get high volume, it's like, yeah, it's not gonna work. It's you would need to figure out how to manage this in an efficient way. So here really yeah and and i think one of the things i was so in in cloud integration we did i did yesterday experience that it was also behaving a bit slow it is obviously different there because you have two different nodes that are running uh, independently the you have the web ui and then you have the runtime node and they are obviously running in different paces Oh, I should also expand this one. Um, this one was that they had done a migration of uh, some integration scenarios. One of the, the challenges that they then found was that after they had done the migration and said, well, now we are well alive, the PI system was still working on these scenarios and had processed these messages in a different way or something like that. So obviously it makes sense to share and communicate what you're doing in your team um, so it's easy for everybody to figure out what's going on and yeah communication is important for these scenarios so i fully grasp this this it's content i obviously do also want to promote the the test driven development and i think it does add some sense to be able to do this. Um, but I also think that you should definitely know what you're about to achieve, not just if I use this input, I should get this output. Then you don't really understand the concept of the rules uh, below it. And this is, I think, one of the, the challenges that it is okay to, to use it as a way of understanding what's going on. But I think a lot of cases you would not really know what the developers would be expecting from these messages. What are the expected output payloads? Um, and you should obviously know the specification of what is going on. Um, yeah, uh, this is also one of the, the focus areas of that we, we build, making sure that you can create test cases, making sure that you can run them, and especially for migration scenarios, taking messages from your PI system and being able to run them there makes a lot of sense. Um, this one I've, I've run in, in recently, and this is a, something I've had a lot of conversations on. Uh, with diff different customers on what were going on. Um, so one customer had about 90,000 alerts in the last week or so on a development system, maybe two weeks, something like that. But if you get that amount of alerts, you cannot do 
any useful monitoring. You need to get the, the number of alerts down to a manageable uh, item. So obviously this was development system and there could be a lot of problems that I did not look at what these errors were. The other one was when I've had some conversations with people that said we don't need a monitoring solution because we got company X doing all the monitoring for us or some person that is sitting in a basement and doing the monitoring and they have different manual processes to handle these things. The, it is inevitable that you will get errors. You will get things that would not work as you would expect them to do. Um, but there's also a road to being able to strive to, to improve these things. Uh, I think a long time ago we had a, a goal about eliminating all the errors we're getting on a daily basis in the system. Because then it meant that an error actually meant something that it was something we needed to act on it's like oh yeah this is this part it, we get this error from time to time we don't need to know about this and that is part of the things that we should you, know, you should be considering how you can actually understand what is going on what's important for you uh, as a part of these things so I think the, the, the key aspect is obviously having a monitoring net tool, being able to check out what is going on on the system, creating filtering and uh, alerts of these messages so you don't get an inbox full of all different alerts that you have no clue about how to process and what is important. Um, and yeah, then you just want to make sure you're not getting the same errors in time and time again. All of this can be handled by the FIGAF. So that was all I wanted to, to share with you in this uh, Halloween edition. I hope you enjoyed it and you did find it uh, useful. There was a lot of uh, interesting ideas and concepts of this and I really appreciate the stories that you guys have shared with me. Um, made me reflect on a lot of the different things that we have been working on. And I think as an integration developer, we need to create have the better tool being able to deliver integration at a better pace thanks